Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to the next episode of our Unity 3D tutorial where we create meshes. Uh, I gotta apologize if I repeat myself a little weirdly in this episode, it's because I actually already recorded this, but there was a, a problem with the recording, so I'm having to do it again. I think it'll be fine. So, we talked in the last time that I wanted to um, create a prefab for my road segment. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is so that we can use, you know, the inspector over here to, to make tweaks and changes and things like that, um, and not have to rely on the this sort of function over here to do everything like set cast shadows and that sort of thing. Um, I'm not I'm not saying that this is a better way of doing it. I'm just saying it's a way of doing it. And you know, I happen is like, oh, in this situation is like, oh, this felt good, so I'm doing it this way. Um, so your mileage may vary. You can take a lot of different approaches. It's all fine. We're going to start off by creating an empty game object. I'm going to center it. I don't think it's actually important to do that in this case, but it just feels good to do it. I'm going to call this prefab road, and I'm going to drop this into my assets and then I can actually get rid of the original thing. So what this is right now is this is just an empty game object. It's got nothing on it, except of course the, the transform that everything has. So we're gonna go and add some components to this. We're gonna add the mesh filter <clears throat> and add the mesh renderer because right now we are adding these here. When we create the game object here, we are adding the mesh filter and mesh renderer. What we are going to instead be instantiating a prefab. So the prefab has to have those things. Um, I, you can always add components, right? Like let's say that, you know, road was instantiated from a prefab. I can always add a component of a type as well here. But, you know, we're trying to move out of the kind of pure programming, go a little bit more into the visual side of things, which Unity um, really gives us quite well, so let's go and do that. So we're gonna turn off the cast shadows, we're gonna set the, the default road material, oops, that's the texture, this is the material. There we go, everything is peachy and keen and awesome. And now we have to make a couple of changes to our actual script. First of all, we don't want, we don't need the road material anymore, instead we just need the game object um, prefab road. Down at the bottom here, we, uh, we don't need to access the renderer at all, I think, anymore. And we certainly don't have to set the material or set the cast shadows, so we can get rid of that. Um, and over here, <clears throat> instead of creating a new game object, instead we are going to be instantiating from our prefab. Whoops. Prefab road. There we go. Now, normally when I do the instantiate, oh, it's complaining because there's already a road that exists. Normally when I do the instantiate, I often use the version that uh, asks for a position and a rotation. In this case, I'm just going to do it this way and I'm going to set the position this way. Um, you know, there, there's, there's not really, in fact, the other way, you know, doing it over here is probably slightly more optimized, but it really doesn't make a difference and this keeps it a little bit more clear. So I believe, so we've done that <clears throat> and then, oh yes. Instantiate returns an object, not a game object, uh, even though it creates a game object. So you can cast from one to the other and that will resolve that issue. Happens all the time. Okay, everything is great and peachy. Um, I just realized that debug information is probably something that was from the last run through, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Um, so the ground click used to have a slot for a material, but now we're going to want a prefab instead. So we do that, and again, on the ground, for some reason, those parameters don't auto-copy from the script. Like, the script is not a prefab, I guess. It just has certain default values here, and it doesn't auto-populate here until you do a reset. There we go. So we've got prefab road. Now, I think we are back to the stage where everything is working exactly the way that it was, except that now we have a prefab for a road, so we can change some of the parameters here and do various tweaks. Like, let's say we decided that we want all the roads to have a slightish red tinge to it. <clears throat> well, there we go. Now we have that. I, I don't know why you would do that, but, but you've got that. Um, and it also opens up the potential that you could do like custom inspector uh, components, which are very cool and maybe we'll look at at some point, but there you go. Um, one of the things, again, I'm creating meshes in this particular set of tutorials, but you can also modify existing meshes, right? Like if this road prefab happened to have a mesh in it already or something like that, um, over in the code, like you can, all we're doing is assigning a mesh, but you can also, you could do the opposite. You could do mesh M equals mesh um, filter, filter dot mesh. And then in this mesh, you can, you can grab the vertices 
and do stuff to them. You can change them. You can grab, you know, oh, I'm going to grab the, the first vertice in the sequence and change it. I'm going to set it to a different position, right? And then you're transforming things. Or you could do something where you loop through each vertice in the mesh and wibble wobble them around, you know, do something different like that. There's there's no reason you can't do that. That is perfectly, perfectly fine. Uh, in fact, as I recall, the um, the Unity documentation for MeshFilter.Mesh actually has a little loop in there that deforms the object in some fashion. Uh, so, you know, great examples in there. But uh, as it is now, we are running well. Now, with the camera, I, I, I don't think I mentioned that. I moved the camera a little, so we're a little closer, and we're looking sort of a little bit more straight down so we can see what's going on. I don't like the fact that when we click, the position of the road is positioned such that the bottom left corner of the road is where the mouse is. Uh, because the next step, the next thing we're going to do is build towards the ability to click and drag a road, have the road be the correct length and the correct orientation based on our mouse clicks. <clears throat> So we're going we're gonna to look at that next. In fact, I'm going to put another cut in here. So this is a prefab video. In the next video, we're going to look at length and orientation.